You're listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation. I'm Tom Muller with the Cross-Border Research Association. On this show, we explore the frontiers of customs creativity in conversations with customs and logistics experts, technology innovators, research scientists, and other leaders in the field. Industry insiders call this show the PenCast because it's part of PenCP, a network for boosting customs innovation funded by the European Union under the Horizon 2020 program. Today, I'm speaking with Misha Schlecht, a senior scientist in the Customs Laboratory of the Customs Administration of the Netherlands. Hello, Misha, and thank you for joining me on Pushing the Envelope. Good morning, Tom. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, to start off, maybe you could give our listeners a brief background um, of your work in Dutch customs, how you got involved in custom science in the first place and, and, and your general activities now. Sure. Um, I have a background in chemistry, which is somewhat unrelated to customs. But uh, upon finishing my PhD, I applied for R&D funding, got rejected and was looking for a job uh, to fill the time. And customs was uh, very happy to hire me uh, for that time. And I actually had never left. Um, so I've been working with customs for 17 years now um, as a chemist, a senior chemist, a senior researcher, uh, as I am nowadays. And actually, I'm in Brussels at the moment because I, I chose to have, work as an intern with Belgium Customs this year as part of my further education. Huh. Fascinating. I see. So the so the internship in Brussels is a, is a sort of a... Uh, a further, a continuing education project in your in your career? Indeed, indeed it is. Yeah. Mm. So I'm trying to uh, educate myself a bit further. So uh, st- not stepping away from science uh, all completely, uh, but uh, growing towards uh, to be a, a strategic, a strategic advisor for, for my customs administration. Ah. And part of the learning process is working uh, in another uh, job for a year. And uh, I uh, was very happy to learn that Belgian customers was uh, ready to harbor me for this huh. year. They're probably very happy to have you. Uh, I mean, is it is it a, a more managerial learning that you're doing, or is it actually science based um, um, research that you're that you're working no, on? I, I see uh, advisorship as, as my career path, uh, scientific based advisorship. Um, so. Uh, I'm still working in advisorship, and I plan to work uh, in advisorship for, for the years to come. I see. I see. But more on a st- strategic level. I see. Okay. Well, it's interesting that you said that um, chemistry is somewhat unrelated to to customs, because in fact, I would have thought a PhD in chemistry would be an extremely attractive um, um, uh, degree for 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 a customs administration to hire. Evidently, it is. There you are. <laughs> Yeah, well, I uh, I learned that it, it, it uh, we we fit quite good actually. Um, uh, as a chemist, you are very much aware of the, the physical background of stuff. You know that there is a, a physical aspect to everything. Uh, but uh, in our studies and in our work, we learn to abstract from that um, and to look at how uh, we can say something about um, well, the physical world without being in contact with the physical world all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is what I'm basically uh, uh, advising on uh, within my administration quite a lot. So how can we use um, measurements and data uh, to tell something about the actual physical world? Uh, build a model which is well, actually close to truth. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. And that's that's fascinating. And 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 building a model means also building better ways or creating better ways to detect. Um, and predict um, at at speed, presumably in the customs environment. Yeah, that's correct. It's incredibly important to to come to conclusions at the, uh, as we like to call that, speed of commerce. Uh, so, but to be fair, uh, if you uh, do something in that flow of commerce, you always have some sort of impact. Uh, we can't work without an impact. Uh, mm-hmm. We try to minimize it as much as possible. So. Uh, our challenge is to, to come to the um, effective conclusions uh, on the uh, uh, on the nature of the goods that we are seeing as efficiently as uh, as possible. Right, right. Yeah, flow of commerce is a is one constraint that you probably don't run into in a in a uh, as a PhD chemist in a laboratory. There's not so much flow of commerce in your laboratory. That's correct. But uh, um, as a PhD, at some point, you need to 
no, kind of get your PhD. So the, that four year period is is somewhat time constraining uh, in one way, but it's four years. That's different for a few seconds. That's correct. True. Yeah. True. I mean, the, at the end of the day, the real world constraints of time, um, wherever you are, are going to are going to uh, assert themselves. I would think. Now, um, just just generally, um, what what when when you think of memorable successes um, as a customs official in your seventeen years of experience, what what comes to mind uh, as 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 memorable events or perhaps even um, uh, learning experiences that didn't work out? The stuff that didn't work out doesn't you usually. Uh, uh get to the field so uh, there's a kind of, sure. of, of natural shifting in our work um, but um, interesting uh, development that we are undergoing as the customs administration is the uh, development of, uh, of models uh, that can interpret x-ray images for instance and that's hmm. a result of a European funded uh, research project called Axis that was started um, in 2013 and um uh, we've been working on the subject ever since, and uh, very recently I concluded the uh, um, innovation phase, and now we're progressing to a phase where we try to to bring this uh, technology application to the field. Mm. And this is nice to see the whole circle uh, getting close to a closure, actually. As we're not there yet, we're actually pretty far from it. The most complicated part is still ahead of us, that's the bringing technology to the field aspect. Uh, but it's good to see that um, uh, from the projects that we are doing, the European funded research projects like Axis and Seaboard and, and Parsec now, um, we actually are able to, to bring those developments to the field. Mm -hmm. So you say that the trickiest part of the process is actually to bring an innovation into the field, to, to put it into what you call the stream of commerce. Yeah, stepwise. So we're not uh, diving into the stream of commerce, obviously, because there's a lot of um, uh, challenges to that, uh, a lot of interactions with the outside world. That, um, mm. So we like to stay, take it uh, step by step. Uh, the first step actually is to, to, to uh, get convinced of the technology application by, by putting it to test quite severely. And... Uh, and to, to test it in our uh, in our own in-house uh, environment, if you like, so kind of secluded uh, from the full uh, stream of commerce. And uh, if we are confident and we can show to the outside world that there's reason to be confident, then I think the time has come to uh, uh, to try to push it out to to the real world. And even then, that has to happen in steps. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, this sounds like a lot of fun, to be honest with you. Have your your in house laboratory to test things, and then start stepwise uh, uh, implementing it in the real world. That's uh, yeah, a big actually, challenge. My, my, my cluster in the laboratory is called the Living Lab. So we we kind of consider the customs administration to be our laboratory. Uh, uh -huh. So this is where we do uh, where we do our experiments so with our colleagues in. Um, uh, in the actual working environment, uh, but just a step away from the actual stream of commerce. So you do the experiments with your colleagues. Do you do experiments on your colleagues? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, again, uh, we are working in the, uh, uh, in the inspection of goods, uh, not necessarily so of uh, other people, uh, unless they are carrying goods, obviously. Um, but uh, no, uh, we're not experimenting on humans. Uh, just let's let's relieve that uh, and keep that for, um, for for other people to do. That it keeps keeps life a little simpler for you anyway. Your life is complicated enough as it is. Um, yeah, let, let's talk just in general terms about about the importance of customs in the current world of commerce and e-commerce. How how fast is cross border traffic increasing, um, and what does this mean for for the future of EU customs? Um, we have seen um, economic growth being translated in. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the the increase of, of containers, so sea containers being shipped around the world. So there's a um, so apart from the uh, COVID uh, pandemic um, contraction, uh, there's been a steady growth of containers being shipped around the world. Uh, but uh, most impressively, probably, is the growth in in, in commerce. So the, the packages that we all send and receive, um, that's an 
highly um, intense um, business, if you like, with enormous uh, growth figures on a yearly basis. So uh, we've seen growth notwithstanding the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, so that's, it's, it's fair to say that this is by far the most um, uh, uh, relevant challenge that we have at our hands at this moment. People talk about a trade-off or, or um, um, between the facilitation of trade on the one hand and the protection of society and optimization of duty and tax collection on the other. Is it possible to pursue those two goals at the same time? Oh, yes, of course. Um, uh, the balance that you're in is bound by the type of technology that you use and the way you educate your colleagues uh, at that point. But if you try to uh, uh, do something about the, the technology or, or in your work to educate your, your colleagues uh, a bit better, you're quite likely to find another balance between uh, facilitation and, uh, and inspection. Um, so that there's a, a lot of room for, for improvement and actually continuous improvement um, uh, in, in that field. So it's by no means a, uh, a hard choice between the one or the other. Uh, there's a balance, and there's a continuously improving balance. I see. And your presence now in Brussels for a year is part of that continuous improvement process, continuous learning, continuous adaptation to new requirements. Oh, yes, of course. It, it's for me as a person that that's uh, the main reason that I'm here. At the same time, I'm trying to help my Belgium colleagues as uh, as much as possible. But um, well, to be fair, as a scientist, we know that if someone else is taking a step, uh, you have to take a step yourself as well, because um, you're you're bound to to, to be overtaken uh, by the other party. Um, so uh, I'm also here to learn how uh, things are being tackled here in Belgium. And to also apply that uh, uh, back home in the Netherlands uh, in a year's time. Ah, well, you're really living the, um, the 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 motto and the aim of of PenCP is, of course, to create this network and to encourage exchange of information, exchange of ideas, and and you're a living proof that that, that attitude is well is well uh, rooted in in uh, European customs. It is. Would you say the EU is a, is is a leader in research and application of of customs innovations? Uh, on some fields, it, it really is. Um, on other fields, less so. But uh, to be fair, uh, we have been part of European research uh, and innovation projects for some time now, and uh, they have given us the possibility to to look at uh, technology developments uh, firsthand uh, as part of those projects. Um, and we, I think, learned um, about the possible applications of those technologies uh, way better than we uh, we could have as a re- if we were just standing uh, on the sideline waiting for uh, products to be thrown our way. Um, and I see that as part of those projects, like uh, uh, Axis, the one I've mentioned before. Uh, the Seaboard, the Cosmic Project, the Parsec Project nowadays, um, all the main um, technology developments that I know that I know of around the world have also been represented in those those projects. Um, so that gives me uh, good confidence that that uh, uh, within uh, the Horizon program, uh, those um, key developments are are uh, are supported. And uh, throughout through those projects, are also uh, brought closer to the field step by step. So it sounds so, like you're you're a fan of the Horizon Project um, framework and and initiative, especially on the research and innovation side. Yes, yes, I am. Um, we need to to work together to to um, also bring those uh, developments uh, closer to the field. Uh, to be fair. Uh, I think that's where we, uh, we at least we are uh, as customs administrations um, still have a have a job to do. Uh, probably together with uh, the colleagues in the commission, um, I'm not sh- sure that all the instruments that we have at our hands are used um, as they should be used. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we should constantly ask the questions whether the instruments are, are the right ones to uh, to bring the challenges uh, or to bring the uh, developments to the field. Um, so there are just two aspects to that uh, 
to that gap uh, that we're trying to close. And how do you see um, the proper way forward for bringing um, proper instrumentation to the field? What are, what are the steps required to do that effectively and, and in a timely manner? So if you ask the commercial entities involved in that development, uh, you, you'll learn that, that uh, as technology progresses in its development, it's getting more and more expensive uh, to take every next step. Uh, so uh, becoming closer to, to uh, actually the commercial environment is, is, is more cost intensive at every step. Um, at the same time, of course, we as administrations need to be uh, close to, to keep on um, uh, conveying our, our needs and our challenges and, and they'll become more detailed as, as technology uh, progresses towards uh, an operational uh, uh, application. Um, so I see the need for um, uh, the, the need for 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 for, for financing, um, co-financing, if you like, um, and I see the need for end-user uh, contributions, um, and uh, well, if we want the European industry to be developing. Um, uh, at a pace that that is helpful for us, uh, we might want to reduce on our uh, on the complexity of, of how we um, uh, need to work together, um, and, that, and that may well help us to take uh, the next step a, a bit faster uh, than we do right now. Mm. But it's a common challenge. It's not something that's entirely down to the Commission or entirely down to the industry or to us actually. Uh, so we need to work together. That that's clear. Uh, but the again, the complexity of working together uh, may well um, limit the uh, uh, the speed at which we can uh, uh, help to bring those technology applications to the field. Mm -hmm. Understood. Understood. Um, you've mentioned Parsec as as one of the m more recent of projects that you, the EU Horizon projects that you've been involved with. What what are the key objectives and the biggest challenges in your activities related to Parsec? Yeah, you know, we talked about the stream of commerce, uh, stream of commerce, uh, Tom, a bit earlier on the, on this show, and um, so if there is one. Uh, type of, 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 of commerce in which the, the speed of, of, of commerce is incredibly high then it is I think in the e-commerce and in the uh, postal operations um, so uh, technologies are really put to test um, as part of those projects to, to make sure that they can fit the um, uh, operational environment they, they are intended to, uh, to function at some point so this is, I think, a key challenge in, in that project. And um, another key challenge is, of course, to, to, to come up with the technology that is able to discern between threat and non-threat in the first place. Um, and uh, we've been working on the container level for the last couple of years, um, not necessarily neglecting uh, the post and parcel environment, uh, but we kind of assumed that it would be taken care of um, by the uh, existing technologies. Uh, but we've learned that the, uh, the existing technology uh, is well able to, to help us um, in, a, in a large number of scenarios, but not necessarily in all scenarios. So this called for, for further technology development and for a new technology, uh, application of new technologies. And so I'm very happy to also see that happening in the, uh, in the Parsec project. And again, this is a, a example of, of, of uh, a cooperation where, where research and development uh, entities are working together with uh, end users, in this case also the postal uh, and the courier um, uh, supply chain partners and uh, law enforcement partners uh, to bring something forward. In the end, it's not our supply chain in which we are going to carry out those inspections. Those are the ones of the postal and e-commerce parties. Um, and uh, again, this is, I think, the, the 
key to the success of the other Horizon projects and the framework projects before that is that those three partners were brought together um, and, and, and were given the possibility to, to work together for a prolonged time to really understand uh, each other's needs and each other's challenges and to see where they can help each other out. And I think that, that in most circumstances, um, we are not as far as part as uh, far apart as we like to think uh, in our everyday lives. And so you learn that by being in the same room with these people, working on common projects together, having daily communication, and getting to know their their life's work as well as it, it, indeed, it, yeah. and to feel what's important to them. So we can all send each other emails and discuss over Zoom, and that's that's great. You know, we can really inform each other at a different level. Uh, but it gets even better when we get into the room uh, and in front of a whiteboard together and try to find solutions together. Um, and that's, I think, the the, uh, the pure benefit uh, of those uh, uh, Horizon projects, uh, apart from the the, the, uh, the the obvious technology development as part of it. No, oh, that's nice. Think it, it, problem solving together in front of a whiteboard is a good image for moving forward together. Uh, obviously, you have people uh, from very different backgrounds, very different communities, both public and private. Um, within the public, you have law enforcers, you have postal, and so on. What are the challenges of 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 um, communicating across these different divides, and and what kinds of barriers do you think there are that divide the thinking between the different groups? Um, well, if you don't meet each other, it's difficult to to have an, a common opinion about it. It's easy to, um, to put it the other way around. It's easy to to have a kind of abstract, um, mm. not necessarily true opinion about someone else if you never met him or her and, and discuss the, the challenges that they are in. Uh, it, it oversimplifies uh, things. So there's a clear need for for the. Uh, the, the, the social interaction uh, apart from the technology development and um, so I, I do think that there is um, so apart from the project this is our uh, I think our, one of the key challenges how can we connect still uh, and, and then understand um, the, the challenges that, that, that all the different uh, partners public and private are in um, so that uh, if it's a challenge, it means that it's sometimes keeping us apart, uh, and sometimes, uh, ideally, it, uh, we uh, are finding the instruments to get together and to uh, um, to, to come to something productive. So. Mm -hmm. And and do you? I mean, working with um, industry uh, in 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 close cooperation with industry in a project. Uh, like Parsec or like PenCP in, in in a more network fashion. Do you see an opportunity for customs to to educate them on on your, what's important to you? Uh, share your expectations of what you want from the technology and how you want it to operate. Is this a a way to bridge that gap? The uh, a project like Parsec or PenCP? No, I'm very happy with the PenCP project. Uh, we were talking about uh, getting together and, and discussing, and this is actually what the, the, the project is, uh, is, a, is, is aiming for. So bringing uh, together different uh, groups of people that don't necessarily meet in everyday life uh, um, and to, to keep book of the, the challenges that we have and to keep, to keep stock of the, the developments that take place in the outside world and try to match them as much as possible. So this is where uh, PenCP is... is Quite unique uh, where it comes at least to, to the customs environment. Um, so the networking project is is very important, uh, and that is also a reason why that is so because there is not um, uh, a natural connection at, at this point. There's no natural uh, way of meeting each other um, at uh, regularly. Uh, obviously, there's a WCO conference and there's uh, some EU workshop where the groups meet, um, but that's more show and tell. Uh, I think in, in PCP, uh, we are allowed to get just one step deeper and there's a, a somewhat funding available for, for, for diving into uh, uh, some of the subjects that we find interesting. And uh, so this helps to, to, let's say, break your eyes a bit. Um, and ideally, 
uh, we'll still we'll see larger projects emerging from from that ten CP cooperation, be it Horizon projects, be it tender projects, or whatever. Um, but that would be the the way to 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 look at the success of of ten CP to see uh, uh, what comes out of it. What are we able to grow kind of a, a, a natural way of, of interacting with each other, a platform which is working for all of us and, uh, and projects like uh, Tender projects and, and uh, new riser projects emerging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seeing seeing the actual tangible results of, of a project like PenCP is 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 what they say, as they say in English, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, <laughs> actually producing something that uh, that matters. Yeah, in a way, I think the Parsec project is is already living proof, uh, a living pudding, if you like. Uh, Tom, <laughs> it's, uh, I don't like to eat living puddings, but um, um, yeah, well, this is uh, something that has, has uh, spurred from 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 the PenCP project. Uh, some of the partners uh, were also uh, are also part of the PenCP. There's a, a whole community added to it, um, so I'm very happy that uh, uh, to see this um, project coming alive. Uh, a part of the result uh, of, of PCP, I like to think. Yeah, that's no, that's a very good, that's a very good point. That it is the sort of the child of of the PCP environment. Is is um, uh, PCP talks about innovation spirited customs officers as being a. Uh, Something to strive to, something to um, to to empower. Is there another kind of customs officer? Aren't you all innovation spirited? <laughs> yes, I like to think so, Tom. It's uh, uh, maybe to the outside world it may f- sound like a contradiction in terms, um, but it actually is not. Um, like my colleagues and and I um, go to work every day to do our work better every day. Um, but uh, if you work in operation, and yeah, there's a, a, a lot of time pressure on your on your back. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. And you just uh, improve as part of your everyday work. And you don't call it a project. Uh, or you don't call it innovation. You just do. And I think this is part of the, the, the customs uh, culture, if you like. Uh, maybe we don't uh, talk about innovation often, but we just try to do it. And... Uh, I'm in a lucky position to, to, to look at it from from a somewhat uh, a larger distance, uh, so I, I'm able to, to call it innovation. Uh, but uh, I'm not no different um, than any of my operational colleagues who are just trying to do their work better every day. So I I like to think of of, of my customs colleagues and, and and ourselves actually as a as a, as highly innovative. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. No, that's 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 very interesting. We talked a bit about how you're being in the same room with industry or with academia. You you see their points of view. Is is PenCP and similar projects also an opportunity to learn the the needs and the and the constraints of other public bodies, postal, law enforcement, regulatory bodies? Well, they haven't been involved that much yet. Uh, but in the end, uh, of course, the regulatory bodies are very important for the a- acceptance of, of, of new technologies. And uh, commercial entities uh, um, that have set up the supply chains in which we have to do our work uh, will er- will always be of, 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 of very uh, large importance and to... Uh, the principal possibility to, to do our work. Um, um, so, yes, um, we might uh, want to enlarge the community that we have grown thus far um, with uh, people who are responsible for those supply chains, uh, commercially responsible for those supply chains, and those parties who are looking uh, over our shoulders to see whether we are doing our work uh, in the way the society uh, intended uh, to do our work. Uh, so it's it's obviously uh, of importance to to build the uh, the most productive network possible, and that probably also involves um, uh, the supply chain operators and also in, in, uh, the supervisionary partners that are needed to, to make sure that the government does uh, what it's supposed to do. It sounds like you uh, you enjoy your work. 
Yes, I do. I, I enjoy my work very much uh, for, for, for 17 years right now. And uh, um, I've been bored one day so far. <laughs> That's not bad. I take that any day. One out of 17 years. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, it I, helps I, if you can escape to Belgium every once in a while. With some <laughs> true. Change is always good. Change is good. Um, and you're, you're the constantly changing landscape of your challenges, what you need to be finding um you know um and the 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 constantly changing um problems that need to be solved that that must be uh stimulus to get you up in the morning yes, at no point we have a final conclusion or a final answer to a question uh, tom so uh, and it's, it's i think it's fair to say that we need to to keep on uh, uh developing ourselves uh in cooperation with with the outside world uh, a close cooperation actually um, and, and uh, come up with solutions that are not just down to the uh, the challenge of the day, uh, but also open to solve solve the potential challenges that we are going to be faced with in, in the near future. And, and they'll be there. Uh, they have been so in the last couple of years. So I'm quite confident they'll be there tomorrow and day after tomorrow as well. Yes, indeed. Challenges will will never be lacking. But if if things go well, I mean, describe a best case scenario for you of Penn CP's impacts on customs going forward. How, what would be the the ideal world of Penn CP's contribution to customs? Well, Penn CP is a, is a network project, so uh, uh, I hope uh, that uh, upon uh, the project finishing or. or, or that, that there will be a natural way of, of interacting uh, between uh, the partners in, involved in the project uh, and, and also the wider type of partners we just touched upon, so the, the uh, supervisionary partners and the uh, uh, supply chain operators. Um, and that natural interaction may be as simple as, as, as conferences, uh, not just showcasing stuff, but also discussing uh, uh, stuff on, on a more regular basis. So again, uh, facilitating um, real contact between real people uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I think that would be a, uh, um, a grand success if that is actually um, um, able to, to transcend uh, the project uh, and, and, and then happen more often uh, in the in the near future, um, so that would be something to to look into for the for the project as a, a as a, as a goal. Um, I hope that it also is able to contribute um, in in, in, uh, in discussing with the commission what, what tools are needed uh, for those uh, for those partners to to interact. Um, uh, beyond the, the project itself. So PenCP has come up with a wealth of tools. Some will work, some won't. That's, that's the research part of it. Um, but the ones that do work, uh, are they are there possibilities uh, to, to uh, give them a place in the existing programs, uh, either CCI or Horizon, um, and allow customers to use them in a uh, probably co-financing way that also would be uh, something I think uh, that would be a, a, a great success for, for NCP if it could be realized. Um, but practically, it comes down to, to, the, the, to the context that we have. Uh, I think very recently, uh, NCP organized uh, uh, workshops and there will be a workshop uh, in, in, in Albania soon. Uh, so uh, I think these are uh, living examples of how uh, the, the project brings together the, the relevant uh, 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 entities uh, and to, to discuss well, challenges, uh, routes to solutions, and the actual application of uh, potential solutions. And I think this is where the uh, project is, is is quite unique. It's, it's one of the only pan-European approaches uh, uh, to uh, uh, solving the, the, the uh, helping to solve the uh, the, the challenges that, that the customs administrations are are faced with, um, and as such, is uh, again it, it has its unique uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say, just so far, based on your experience, what tools for facilitating interaction have worked well so far? What would you like to see? Which tools would you like to see made a part of the? permanent customs landscape going forward? Mm, 
I think when we're trying to to uh, imagine our ideal toolbox, um, I always try to uh, take myself as an example here. When I go to a tool shop, Tom, I always look at the big and expensive tools and say, well, what would it be great to have that one? And I, I think it would my work would make my work easier and I could like do my redo my house within a couple of hours. <laughs> um, obviously, that is not going to be true. Um, actually, I most help with the, the small stuff. Um, uh, uh, a great screwdriver, uh, maybe an automated button, but um, that would help me do a lot of different things uh, with the same tool. Uh, the same thing might be true also for uh, one of the PNCP instruments. There's a, there's a wealth of instruments there. But I think that the smaller ones that allow me to swiftly interact with the outside world have been uh, probably the most productive, uh, uh, at least for me, uh, but I'm just one person. Um, I also liked uh, the uh, uh, PNCP as a breeding ground for, for new projects uh, to, to discuss challenges and um, to, to, to freely uh, speak your mind about the potential or the lack of potential uh, for some uh, uh, research and innovation projects. Uh, that's also is, is something that I would very much like to, to, to see uh, uh, proliferating uh, up on the project. Right, right. Uh, your, yeah, your mention <laughs> of simple tools, simple and versatile tools, I think is an extremely important concept that the appeal of the shiny, magic and expensive uh, technology is is constant but what actually helps the most sometimes is like you said a very good screwdriver there's a there's a concept and i think it was initially in the american military but it's a universal k-i-s-s keep it simple stupid <laughs> and i think that's that's a good general rule to follow yeah so we need to like like uh indeed versatile simple tools uh to make sure that the interaction between the uh administration, uh, industry, and academia uh, can take place at different levels. Uh, so there's already the existing infrastructure for the rise and stuff. Uh, we've seen CCI popping up the last couple of years, so that will take its course. Uh, but there's a need for like the, the, the short-term uh, stuff. So what can we do in one to two years, uh, which is not that complex because you know, if it takes a lot of time, uh, the time frame will be, uh, will be too much limiting. Uh, so what can we do uh, with those tools, uh, w the tools that uh, can be brought to the field in, say, uh, one or two years' time? Let, let's close with a few very general questions. Um, and, and there's no right answer or wrong answer, but from your perspective of 17 years of experience um, in the various aspects of, of European customs, what do you perceive to be the key challenges for the next generation of customs officers? Hey, Oh, for the years to come, well, we need to do at least the same and probably more with, with less people. Uh, so that is probably one of the key challenges that we are um, already being confronted with and will keep being confronted uh, uh, with. Uh, so this is probably the main thing. Uh, and the typical answer would be like automation, but automation itself is, is not a solution. Uh, people need to be able to use automation in one way or the other. So also with less people, we need to uh, uh, be able to, to work with automation and do it in a meaningful way and also in a way that's, uh, that society uh, asks us uh, to do. So, uh, so this is, a, I think, a, a clear challenge uh, that we have uh, ahead of us for probably for, for the years to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of talk that recently about chatbots and artificial intelligence, artificial... We still need human brains to point them, right? I mean, it's uh, it's it's. Uh... Well, I see uh, technology and, uh, and people working uh, well hand in hand is maybe not the right uh, uh, phrase to, to put here, but it's uh, uh, it's good to, to to always focus on people using technology uh, to a certain end uh, and. Uh, I've rarely seen complete automation in my in my life so far, Tom. So it, it's kind of a hypothetical thing, really. Um, and I'm not that much afraid of being people being completely superseded by uh, by automation. Uh, work will shift. I think that's that's fair to say. Uh, and in shifting work, we will do other stuff than uh, we did ten years ago. But hey, 
we're discussing on an iPad. Uh, we didn't do that 10 years ago either. So life changes. That's right. That's right. And your flexibility towards the, the future is, is one of the key attributes to, to adapting properly when, when life changes, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, well, I, I do see that, that uh, in, in continuous education uh, and, and exposing ourselves to, to, to all those innovations, uh, we at least learn what's most applicable to our field and, and, and how to use it in the most uh, efficient and effective way possible. And also in, in a way that uh, is transparent for, for society, to, that makes it transparent to for society to see how we reach our conclusions. Uh, uh, we need to keep abreast all the uh, laws and regulations that have been uh, been, uh, been been developed for 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 the te latest technology applications, and they're not just just there to. Uh, to make life difficult there, there for a good reason, uh, I think. And that's the reason why we have to uh, uh, also take that into uh, close consideration when looking at the future technology applications. Um, how do we feed into uh, the continuous development of, of regulation, if you like? Mm -hmm. And and you personally, and this is the last last question for, for today. But um, how do you see research and innovation influencing your professional tasks in the next five to ten years? If you put on, uh, you know, if you looked in the crystal ball, how would how would you see research and innovation changing the way you work? <laughs> well, um, well, we'll probably see that that uh, uh, a lot of automation will take place in the, the customs environment, uh, but in a way that it enables my colleagues to, to make better decisions themselves. They will be the persons who uh, will decide at the end of the day if something goes left or right, I suppose. Um, but to be fair, Tom, maybe I'm not the right person to ask this question to. And I, well, it's not to see in the podcast, but my hair is getting gray. <laughs> and um, uh, I have this this picture in mind and this conversation I had with a professor when, once I was doing my PhD and I said well you know at the age of 45 I can hardly follow my own PhDs anymore it's, it's, and maybe that shouldn't be uh, my job anymore my, my job should be to make sure that those people are able to do their work and to, to take the steps and to guide them around and to show them the, the pitfalls that I've uh, uh, moved along uh, in my professional life um, so that's Probably where uh, where I'll be heading, trying to uh, help my colleagues to do their uh, work in research innovation, and uh, to make sure that my administration is uh, continuously improving itself, uh, and, and and thereby uh, helping to address the challenges they are confronted with uh, uh, in our societies. Advisorship, in a word, um, and and guy using your personal experience and your uh, the challenges you faced in the past to. To help others face their challenges. Indeed, yeah, that's. Uh, I like. I look forward very much to, to uh, accomplishing that, or to keep on doing that for, for for the years to come. Yes, yes, indeed, and 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 I can't think of a better advisor for someone to have than than someone with your background and and uh, and perspective, and also a sense of humor, which doesn't hurt. Uh, thank you so much, Misha Schlecht, for sharing your insights on your work and uh, and your insights on the future of customs innovation. It's really been Thanks a pleasure uh, speaking with you, and and I look to further I look forward to further discussions in the near future. Thanks, Tom. It's been nice to to, to be part of the show, and uh, I hope that uh, it will contribute to to a continuous discussion on uh, on customs innovation. Indeed, and that's the underlying goal of PenCP as a as a project, but clearly one of the key um, aims of of pushing the envelope. Uh, this podcast uh, to to keep the dialogue open and keep uh, different perspectives bouncing back and forth across each other. You've been listening to Pushing the Envelope, Life at the Cutting Edge of Customs Innovation, a podcast that profiles leaders in customs and their views, ideas, and inspirations about the future of customs innovation. Join us soon for our next pencast and another insightful conversation with customs trendsetters and forward thinkers. <laughs>